A freshman, number 10, Austin Ford. A freshman, number 12, Curtis Miller. A senior, number 15, Brandon Guyverson. A junior, number 20, Sean Lay. A junior, number 21, Cole Ford. A sophomore, number 24, Stephen Staples. A senior, number 25, Nate Gilbert. And a junior, number 30, Craig Rich. And now the team members for the host, Central Aristic Panthers, coached by Tim Brewer. A freshman, number five, Cameron York. A sophomore, number 23, Sam Quackadile. A junior, number 25, Eric Martinez. A senior, number 35, Brian Shaw. A senior, number 41, Paul Donahue. A junior, number 45, Matt McCartney. And a senior, number 51, Travis Wright White. And now for the starting lineup. First, for the Valley High Cavaliers, standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, a senior playing guard, number 11, Tyler Guyverson. For the Central District High School Panthers, at 5 feet 11 inches tall and a junior, playing guard, number 11, Taylor McLaughlin. For Valley, at 6 feet even, and playing guard, a senior, number 14, Lucas Melcher. For Samuel Rusick, at 6 feet 1 inches tall, playing guard, a junior, number 15, Andrew York. For the Cavaliers, at 6 feet 5 inches tall, a junior and a center, number 22, Travis Hubby. For the Panthers, at 5 feet 11 inches tall, a sophomore, playing forward, number 21, Tim Powelson. For Valley, at 6 feet 2 inches tall, a senior forward, number 31, Mark Hyland. For Central Rooster, at 6 feet 1 inches tall, a senior, guard number 31, Jason Woodward. And for the Valley High School Cavaliers, at 6 feet 2 inches tall, a junior, playing forward number 32, Eric Hatfield. And for the Central Rooster Panthers, at 6 feet even, a senior at center, number 33, Brock Burr. Officials for this game are Mr. Whitaker, Mr. Cludia, and Mr. Seroy. The certified trainer of the table is Mr. Phil Mateo. Thanks for basketball action here at the auditorium. We have not seen Valley play this year, so any assessment that we may make uh, prior to this game is only what we've read, what we've heard. But certainly in their warm-ups, they look very impressive. Now they take the floor for us. They will be in blue. Scott Jarvison. Melcher, Hubby, Highland, and Hatfield. Well, one thing about Valley High School, when you grow up in Bingham, Maine, and you start playing basketball, you have the expectation of, at some point in your career that you will be playing in this very setting and competing for a state championship. And here they are, once again, the eighth straight year. And Hubby will jump up against York or Central Olympic as they get ready for basketball action. And the tip control by Valley. This is Melcher on the left side. Melcher on the dribble to the right side to Highland. Highland got it in there by Carlson. Now at the top, it goes to Guyverson. Guyverson starts down the middle. The ball is stripped away by McLaughlin. And the Central Rooster team will go the other way. McLaughlin has it back from Woodward. Now to Carlson. Carlson against Melcher. He starts to the right side at the top. Now the left goes to York. Rock behind the back, loses the ball, picks it up. Still on the drive, fakes. Goes to McLaughlin in the corner, shot, no good. Rebound action taken off by Zanley. Both teams open up with a man-to-man. -man. Tough assignment, Central Roostick is down there on the block trying to cover Travis Hovey. He's certainly a tower of strength. Brought Burke, Burke rather, draws that assignment for Central. Melcher with the ball on the right side, goes to the top to Guyverson. Now it goes to Highland with a shot. It's no good. Rebound action taken off by Burke. Good position off the windwork of Central Rooster. He stands down with it at the foul line to pop. It's a round and gets the roll. Well, we talked about Andrew York at the top of the game, but Jason Woodworth, certainly a, a very effective player, averaged 16 points a game on the season. Melcher with the ball, corner Guyverson. Guyverson of Valley now in between. It goes to Hovey. Hovey turns, puts it up, all glass. Rebound taken off by Woodworth. Looks down, 
Stash to go. McLaughlin, now to Burrett. Good fake. He's going to put it off the glass too hard. Rebound goes out of bounds. And it's going to be Central with the claw. And you can see Hubby, there's a good look at Dwight Littlefield. Hubby doing a good job of contesting inside. Now it goes to Woodworth. His outside shot is no good. And Hubby comes off with a rebound. Check that. That was Hatfield. Now to Melcher. Melcher on the dribble to the right side to Highland. Now to Giverson. Giverson looking inside. Now when the dribble goes to the top again to Highland. Mark to the right side to Giverson. Giverson the baseline. Giverson goes all the way. Hooks it back. Ball is lost. It was intended for Hubby, but Hatfield picks it up and puts it in. Good job that time getting the ball inside. Deflected pass, but recovered nicely. Carlson with an outside three, and he hits. He kind of backed up from the arc, put it up, and it's 5-2. to two. Giverson on the foul line, on the baseline. The shot is no good. Rebound tip picked up by York. York wants to go with it. <clears throat> Still on the dribble. Got it by Hatfield. Now down the middle. Nice bounce goes inside to Burt. Comes back outside to Carlson. Carlson with a shot. No good. Rebound McLaughlin inside and puts it in. Good position that time by McLaughlin. Took inside position that time away from Mark Highland, number 31 for Valley. And quickly Central Rustic jumps to a 7-2 lead. Left side to Highland. Now lead pass comes to Hovey inside. Hovey's shot, no good. Rebound action taken off in the air by Hatfield. He gets it back outside to Highland. Highland's going to stop, and the ball is ripped away by McLaughlin. And the jump ball will be Camden. Camden. It'll be Central Rustic's ball. Now, although the size advantage goes to Valley right now, Central Rusick doing an outstanding job on the board, limiting Valley to one attempt and picking up offensive rebounds themselves. They're very active inside. Some good athletes with Carlson, Woodworth, McLaughlin, and, of course, York. Woodworth at the foul line now outside to Carlson with a three, and he hits the second one. Ten to two. Sam Clockadile checked in the game. He's got him. Melcher at this point. Nelson's going to go right to the glass, puts it up, misses the shot, and draws the foul. Two well, shots coming up. And we talked about the offensive firepower here for Central the Rustic. They are not afraid to get up and down the floor and let it fly. And they have several players that can really score the basketball. Blockadile picks up his first personal foul, first team foul. On the line is Lucas Melcher. Melcher will have a pair. Foul shot is up and no good. And checking in the Valley High School will be uh, Nate Gilbert, 25, and Cole Pullen, number 21. One of the things that Central Roostic wanted to do, Joe, they felt it was important to keep the tempo going pretty quickly, not allow Central, or rather Valley, to set up in their half-court set and pound the ball inside to Hovey. So one foul shot out of two. This is Jock. He stops on a dime, puts it up. It's no good. And rebound strong in there by Nick Gilbert. Off to Melcher. Melcher stats down with Crocodile on him. Highland with it. The ball is deflected by Carlson. Now goes in the middle of Hovey. Hovey turns in a crowd. Back outside to Pullen. Pullen's in a crowd too. Highland with a downtown three. Yeah. Now that is, that is no surprise because he is their chief outside threat. There you see him right there, number 31, Mark Highland. He can really shoot the three. 10 to 6 to score. 4.07 left in the first quarter. Shaw rejected the game. His shot is no good. Rebound taken off by Highland. And Bailey will go the other way. Back to Highland. He stops. Ball's uh, intercepted in there by Yock. Lead pass goes to Carlson. Carlson wants to work with it. Stats toward the middle. Now it goes to Yock. Yock down the middle. Goes to Clockadale to the right side of Carlson. Carlson's going to go with a jump shot off the glass and in. Central Roost is very quick off the dribble. Tim Carlson opened up in impressive fashion here in the first quarter with eight quick points. Pass goes to Javi in the middle. He's in a traffic jam, puts it up. It's no good. And the rebound taken off in there by Brian Shaw. Javi falling away on his shot, giving him no chance to follow up for an offensive rebound. York with it. Andrew on the dribble, down the middle, back outside. Clockadile goes to Carlson for his third three, and he nets it. Why not? Is he hot or what? 15 to 6. Central Rustic round right the blocks here. Leading now, by nine. We talked a lot about York and Woodworth. I'm not sure that York has shot the ball yet. Woodworth maybe with one. Quick timeout now. Taken by Valley. As they're on the short end of a 15 to 6 score. 
And Dwight Littlefield wants a 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout. So they've been able to do a couple of things, Central Rustic that is. They've been able to keep Hovey away from the basket and uh, work up their pad and fast break. This is a team with unselfish players that's going to give the ball up to anyone that's open. Right now, Tim Carlson, the sophomore, has the hot hand. He's put in eight out of the 15 points. But team effort overall by the Central Rustic team. Well, there you saw it quickly, and there's a, the Valley huddle, and you see Dwight Littlefield there. There is certainly no panic in that man. He's had enough big game experience, so he's simply trying to calm his players down. He knows it's a, there's a long way to go in this basketball game. Eric Martinez checks in for Central Rustic. He's number 25. Melcher now with an outside shot by Pullen is no good. Rebound taken off by Martinez. And Hubby out of the game now for, for Valley. Coming down with it is York to the left side. Martinez goes right to the glass. He's going to pull it up. He's deflected away. Picked up by Wood Woodworth. And Woodworth is traveling. Melcher thought that he had the foul. He quickly looked up. But it's a travel violation. 15 to 6 to score. 235 in the first quarter action. This game moves right along. Valley having a little trouble right now with Central Rustic's quick, quickness off the dribble in terms of their penetration. Island now. Ball goes to Pullen. Pullen right to the glass. Puts it up and in. He takes Yacht with him and he puts it in. Woodworth coming back with it. Gets a screen. Now coming back and they're going to call a blocking foul. That one's going to go to Taylor McLaughlin to set the illegal screen. Did not give the defender enough room to move out of the way. You've got to give them at least a, a step. Otherwise, it's going to be a foul on the screening player on the offense. Carlson checks back in the game as Tim uh, Brewer takes out Andrew Yacht. Bullen will handle the ball, chases it down, loses it. Martinez with a bunny all the way left hand and in. Just for the Rooster. Came out in a scramble defense, a little run and jump. Melcher now in the middle, it goes to Pullen, cross towards it. Nice move inside, underhand shot by Jacob who scores. Woodworth coming back down the other way for Central Rustic. 17 to 10 to score. A lot of action this first quarter. Now Martinez with a three. No good, rebound comes off to Pullen of Bailey and he gives off now to Melcher. Melcher will bring down. Melcher in the center of court, now he works to the left side, he's called the problem. Once again, the double team pressure. McLaughlin forced him along the sideline. When he crossed over to the middle, Martinez was there to pick him up. Getting Valley to play a little quicker than they want to, resulting in some mistakes and some errors on the part of Valley. <laughs> Excuse me. Hatfield and Hubby check back in the game for Valley. They're trailing 17 to 10 with 139 left. <laughs> Pullen stays in the game, and he's guiding Woodworth inside of York. Andrew's shot is good. Well, there's and the York. baseline of the jumper. And he can play inside and out. You saw a very nice square up and nice rise on the jump shot by Andrew York. 19 to 10 to score. Hatfield with the ball outside. Now he gives to Pullen. The right side to Melcher. Now it goes back to Hatfield. Starts to move. Can't get it. Goes back outside. Stolen by Andrew York. York right to the glass. And he is fouled hard by Melcher. Andrew had a step on him. Melcher got in. He collided with the uh, supports of the backboard. And he's kind of gingerly walking away now. And going the line will be Andrew York at two. Excellent anticipation by York. There you see him coming in. Get the ball getting stripped by Melcher. But him, Melcher that is, getting a piece of York along the way. And he'll be at the line to shoot two. 103 left here in the first quarter, 19 to 10 to score. Andrews' first shot is good. Checking in for this. Uh, Reporting into the game for the Cavaliers. Cavaliers will be Stephen Staples. He wears number 24. 20 to 10 to score, a 10 point lead by Central Ristic, who came round the blocks and they haven't stopped. I think they got off the bus uh, running today, Joe. I think so. <laughs> And the York second shot is no good. Hubby in a strong rebound. Off to Pullen. Pullen's triple team. Now goes Connor. Staples inside the ball's knocked down. He goes out of bounds. And it'll be Central Rusick ball. Good job defending on the block by Brock Burt, who anticipated, got a piece of it. Good 
rotation and hustle on part of Central Larusic. Right now the tempo is all going Central Larusic's way. 35, Brian Shaw for Central Larusic checks in. Pass goes over to Carlson. Carlson gets a screen at the foul line. The jumper, good! Carlson cannot miss. 22 to 10 to score. A 12 point lead here. And that's 13 for Carlson. Carlson goes inside, Highland, Highland off the glass and in. Mark Highland. Nice play that time by Mark Highland. Coming up is Carlson, they're gonna wait for the last one. Now to Woodworth. Woodworth for the ball, Jason way out the top. Got it by Pullen, now to Andrew York. York got it by Hatfield. York is central rustic in white. Still on the dribble, down to 10. Down the middle, he's gonna split. Puts it up and in. Nice move by Andrew York. Four seconds left, 24 to 12. They're not gonna get a shot off, it doesn't appear. Hubby throws the ball up. The whistle had blown at the end of one. Central Roostick 24, Valley 12. We'll be back right after this. Do you teach math in grades two through five? Are you passionate about educating young minds? So is the Maine Public Broadcasting Network. That's why we're thrilled to bring you the National Teacher Training Institute, taking CyberChase into the classroom. This intensive one-day seminar provides hands-on training on how to effectively integrate technology into your math lesson plans. Space is still available for this unique professional development opportunity, and registration is just $30. For more information, contact MPBN. watching tournament basketball on the television stations of the Maine Public Broadcasting Network. This has been a very torrid first quarter. We saw a lot of action at both ends. Well, a couple of statistics stick out in that first quarter. Valley, uncharacteristically, turned the ball over six times, which is highly unacceptable, particularly in this championship venue. And the second one? Ball goes to Melcher on the baseline left side. Now he's going to put up a shot. He gets it back on the backboard. And they say is deflected. Tipped by Central Rustic. So it will be Valley's ball as they have their starting five back in. Watch the lob inside to Hovey. They can get it. Melcher has to go out deep now to Hatfield. Now to Giverson. Giverson on York goes right to the glass and puts it in. Nice oh, move oh, oh, by Giverson. And no help because. There's a lot of attention paid inside to Mr. Hovey. 24-14, Carlson with it. Got it by Melcher. Now right side, clock it out, clock it out. Shot is no good. Rebound tip, Hovey comes off with it. And Melcher now starts to, starts to bring down. He's challenged, goes left side. In the corner of the Highland, nice defensive play that time by Jason Woodworth as he blocked the shot of uh, Highland on the baseline. Checking back in also is McLaughlin. And outgoing uh, will be Clockadile. And the Central, Central Roostic. And the Central Roostic Panthers just a step quicker. Both ends of the floor right now in the early going. Melcher with the ball. He goes to top to Highland. Back to Melcher. Now inside to Hovey. Hovey wants to work. Burt's there with him. Nice fall away shot from the left side. He puts it in. 24 to 16 to score. Hovey's first two points, which is obviously not the start that Valley was hoping out of Mr. Hovey. McLaughlin with it, gets off to York. York's going to go inside to Burt. He's going to go outside to Carlson. Carlson with a hot hand back to Burt. Now going to give it outside to York. York shot. Burt will chase it down. And is he on the line? I guess so. Good work and good hustle inside, though, that time by Brock Burt. You won't see him shoot the ball much. He prefers to, he's certainly got enough shooters on his team, and he's not afraid to distribute the ball. Melcher with the ball coming down to the right side. Gaverson with an all alone three, and he hits it. Error that time on the part of Central Roostick as they left Gaverson all alone. Gaverson makes it 24 to 19. Woodworth comes right back with it. Central Roostick underneath McLaughlin. McLaughlin's going to go to the basket. It's no good. Huffy comes off with a strong rebound. Off to Melcher. Melcher down to the right again. Garveson right on the baseline. Puts it up on the wrong side. No good. But Hovey is there and he puts it in. 
and Brule wants a timeout. Tim Brule, that is. It is 24 to 21. Quickly, a nine point turnaround, zero. <laughs> nine straight here to open the second quarter on a part of Valley, doing it with penetration on a part of Guyverson. And you also have Mr. Hubby getting involved with his first two buckets of the evening. Hubby has made uh, a couple of tough shots. First shot was a fall away that he made. But you look at him at the other end of the oh. defensive board, he's coming up with the boards. Well, this is a guy that bench presses, by the way, Joe, 275 pounds. So he's certainly, and that's strong in, in, in any league at any level. Carlson has the ball for Central Rustic. Now it comes inside to York, and York's going to be fouled in there by Hatfield. Good simple cross screen along the baseline to free up York, who is, if Central Rustic has a go to guy, it is Andrew York. And there you see him going to shoot two, Andrew York. York, as mentioned, was the MVP of the uh, Class D here at the Bangor Auditorium as well as uh, was hubby uh, down in uh, the western main in augusta the james senior award his clock of that will check back in and carlson will check out well when central got in a little bit of trouble against calvary uh, chapel they went right to york they posted him up did a good job of getting the ball so york is an effective operator both inside and out this is a shot hubby comes off of the rebound now it goes to Melcher of the Valley team. The Guyverson on the left. Foul line extended. Now the top. He's going to turn. Goes to Hovey. Hovey wants to back. He wants to put off the glass and in. And he's got to heat up. 25 and 23. Central Rusick not able to get the double team to him as quickly as they did in that first quarter. York goes to McLaughlin in the corner. His pop is up no good. The rebound action. A push off underneath and maybe on Melcher. He's the one that had the distraught look, and it is. Called up the 14, Lucas Melcher. That's his second, team's third. Checking back in for Bailey High School will be Nate Gilbert. And Hatfield checks out. Carlson will be coming back in the next dead ball. McLaughlin looking for help to get it in. Now loops it. Woodworth is a good outside shooter, and he nails it. It's a two. Jason Woodworth. 27-23. Diverson back with it, right at the foul line. The pop is up and good, and he drew a foul. Nice move that time by Tyler Giverson. It went from the right side to the top, then to the foul line, made the shot, the jump shot, and got fouled. Nice crossover move into the lane. York thought he had it timed. Giverson adjusted in midair, drew the foul, and scored the basket. And Andrew York picks up his first. Three team fouls on both sides. 5-14 left. Javison shot. Tip up by Hovey. Gets it back. Puts it in. And he is starting to dominate. Retired at 27. If he benches 275, he just benched another one. Five minutes left here. Carlson now to York. York turns and he's being fouled by Nate Gilbert. Well, York is a tough cover for anybody. He is able to post up, but with Valley's size advantage, you'll see York operating more on the perimeter and attempting to break down the defense off the dribble. Glockerdile gets the ball in, gets it back at the right side. Now to Woodworth with another shot. Good. Jason Scott's to heat up. He can fill it up in a hurry, too. You notice that Carlson hasn't sh shot much, but... They, they're not afraid to distribute the basketball. They'll go to the hot hand. Nice move inside by Melcher. Carlson comes out for the miss. 29-27. Central Rustic leading this game. 4.30 left. Carlson at the top of the three. No good. Rebound goes to right. Clockadale saves, but they say, no, you're out of bounds. Two very fine Hello, class D basketball teams. Well, we talked about the contest being potentially very high scoring and fast paced, and certainly we, we haven't been disappointed so far. Kyverson behind the back, York with him, goes, puts it up, partially deflected, York comes off with it. York had a piece of it. Nice pass, goes to Carlson, puts it off the glass and in. And that's one thing they do. 
They look up. If there's someone down there, they get the ball. They're very alert in transition. They always have their head up. They can pass off the dribble, which is a huge advantage. 31-27, Hovey inside, puts it up off the glass. This time's no good. Rebound action. Scurry goes to the corner, and finally retrieved in there by Carlson off to Woodworth. Woodworth comes right down the middle, and Giverson is fouling him from, from behind. There comes uh, Woodworth into your living room. A nice little hesitation move at the top by Jason Woodworth. I don't know if we get a look at it, but he gets fouled from behind by Tyler Giverson, his first foul. Great hustle. Here goes Woodworth. That's the end of that crossover move. He gets by Melcher. But Guyberson picks up the foul, and it was great hustle at the other end on the defensive end by Timmy Carlson. Dove on the floor, extended, and able to save the ball and keep the Central Rusic possession. Martinez checks in for Central Rusic. Paul Pullen uh, checks in, number 21, for this um, Valley team. Going inside, and a shot, and there's going to be a foul on Highland. Also checking in is number 20, is Sean Lay for the uh, Cavaliers. Now both of these clubs have a little bit more depth than you find than, than what is traditional in a Class D uh, basketball team. Both teams are seven, eight deep and effectively so. Talon McLaughlin misses the first foul shot. Checking back in as well will be uh, Nate Gilbert. And Carlson comes back in as Glockadale uh, checks out. Sam takes a breather. Glockland with his second shot. It's up and good. 32 27 the score. Pullen will bring down now on the dribble. Goes to Gilbert. Gilbert's going to put one up and there's going to be a foul. Now it's Valley's turn. To start beating Central off the dribble a little bit, getting into the lane with penetration. Well, number 25, Eric Martinez. That's his first, team's fourth. Martinez picks up his first, so that's the uh, only the fourth team foul. York comes off with it, still on the dribble. Seems a slippery on that floor. Now he loses control. Nice shovel pass inside for Carlson, who's staying at home. He gets the ball in the backcourt. Almost another steal. Now Highland has the ball. Gets the pass to Pullen. Pullen starts down, goes to the right corner. The staples, his outside three is good. So they've got a bench as well. 34 to 30 to score. 255 left here in first half action. Carlson with an outside three. No good. Highland comes off of the rebound. Carlson's cooled off. He knocked down his first three threes, but he hasn't hit since. Staples with it now. He hit the last shot of the three. Now the top to pull and he goes for a three. It's off the glass and now. So it's raining threes. Got a stoppage in play here. The official is going over the scorer's table. Now he's going to Dwight Littlefield. Check me the call was. Uh, we'll never know. My best guess is a delay of game warning. He that if the ball abounds. Right. That if the team that scores, they need to leave the basketball alone after it goes through. They can't hit it, knock it, push it away. So we got a one. Excuse me. And the next time that happens to be a technical foul. 34 33. York back with a shot. No good. Rebound taken off in the middle by Staples. Now it goes to Highland. Highland goes toward the glass. He stops. He puts it up. No good. And he draws a foul. Good job by Highland. Cruising to the baseline with the shot fake, drawing the foul, going to the line, and a chance now for Bally to take the lead. 34-33 the score. And Mark, the senior, six foot two. Go to the line for a couple, and there's a tie. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, it is a tie. Another good go ahead. Burke checks back in. Also clock it out for the Central Rustic team. Two very fine basketball teams going at it here at the Bangor Auditorium. 2.15 remains. The second shot's no good. Rebound taken off by Carlson. Now to York. York's going to go right to the hole. Puts it up and no good. A little bit too hard. 
He was in traffic. Kylan with it now. Goes to Staples. And Staples is on the line. Another basically unforced error on the part of Valley, and their turnovers are still starting to pile up. Looked like it was a slipping and sliding out there on both sides. Turnover number seven. That's the bad news, but the good news is only one here in the second quarter. Carlson's shot is the jump shot Tim at the foul line, and he takes the lead back to Central Rustic. Pullen coming down with it. Now to Hovey. Hovey with a jumper. It's off no good. Rebound by Burt. Outlet pass goes to Woodworth. Woodworth turns with it to the right side. Now still looking for help. Woodworth goes inside to Burt. Burt back outside. Carlson with a three. Bang! Carlson's trying to heat up again. Quickly a five-point lead, 39-34. Pressure continues every time they score, enables them to set up their press. Island back with a shot all here. Nice pick up by Staples. Rejected in there by Clockadale, but Clockadale picks off a piece of them as well. Now Highland's strength is not uh, shooting off the dribble. He's a fine shooter, but he generally will shoot a much higher percentage when, when he has his feet set and has a good look. 39-34 to score. Foul number two on Sam Clockadale. Stephen Staples, a sophomore. Foul shot up and good. Clockadale will check back in. And there he goes, check out. and there is Clockadale from behind. Nice rebound at that time by Staples. Shot is up and no good. This time there's Hubby, puts it up, it's no good. I should say Hatfield. Hatfield misses a shot. Hubby going right after York. York's going to shot with a foul line and bangs it in. Good job of a jump stop by York in the lane. Maintains his control and balance and goes up with a nice looking jump shot. Highland now to Hovey. Hovey's gonna turn in traffic, puts it up, no good. Rebound is knocked out of bounds by Central Rustic Yard. Well, Hovey with the pivot and the drop step found himself actually behind the backboard. Tough angle to score from. Valley doesn't have football, are they? Uh, they don't, maybe in the backyard. <laughs> There's your running back right there, Mr. Hovey. Power of strength. Diverson with it now. Diverson trips, goes down. Pick up in there by York. And there's a lot of slipping going on this floor tonight. Shot inside by Carlson. Doesn't get it. Pullen takes off as we're under a minute now. 34 seconds. Goes outside of Diverson. 41 to 35 to score. Central left 24 to 12 at the end of the first quarter. Goes to Pullen. Pulling out deep. McLaughlin comes right up with him. Now he's in the dribble. Now to Garveson, guarded by Carlson. 11 seconds left. Behind the back, down the middle, stop. Nice pass. Nice set. Oh, 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 oh. He puts it in. Goes to Clockadale. Clockadale at the buzzer. It's no good. Out of bounds. At the one end of one complete, Central Aroostook leads by a score of 41 to 37. We'll be back right after this. Brustick doing a great job with 22 points. Leading scores for Valley. We had Guyverson with nine. Hovey with eight. Both teams shooting at 44% from the floor. And Valley, importantly for them, has stabilized their turnover situation. Although they have eight, they had only two in that second quarter. To only one turnover for Central Aroostook. As we get ready to bring you the second half of this contest, 41 to 37 is the score. It was 24-12 at the end of one. Central Rustic led. Now they lead 41-37. We just start with Woodward, Woodward with the ball. Goes in the corner to Carlson. The ball goes out of bounds. Carlson looked anxious that time, thinking about getting into his shot before he actually caught the basketball. Full court pressure. Hatfield gets the ball back. Now to Melcher. Long pass is going to come down to Highland. Nice pass to Hubby is all alone. This is the shot. Didn't go for the glass, went straight on. Now Melcher back outside of Jiverson. Jiverson turns. Highland, Highland with a three. Yes. He answers right off. And that's what he can do. He gets a little bit of space and he can knock it down. 
41 to 40 to score. This is Carlson. Now loop pass inside to Yawk. Yawk fakes two guys in the air. They're going to call. <laughs> they call a foul on Hatfield. Hatfield is pushing the other way with somebody else beside him. Well, Hovey came over and York immediately was double teamed, but they start, interestingly enough, they're starting Andrew York by locating him down at the low post area. Good up and under move that time by York, and he'll go to the free throw line. Foul number two that time on Eric Hatfield. Foul shot is good. 42-40 to the score. There it is, up and under. Splits the double team. Got them off the floor with a, his pump fake. Splits the double team. Attempting to complete his second free throw. And he does. 43-40 to score. 7-17 left. And a miscue again by Valley. But you know, you look over at, at Dwight Littlefield, no change of expression. He just exudes confidence and poise on the bench for Valley. Woodworth with it right now, guided by Gagason. A central roost to Carlson. Carlson at the top to York. York wants to work. Hatfield's there with him. Jumper good. Again, the rise so Andrew impressive York. on the part of York gets off the dribble and into his jump shot very effectively. Valley gets up a little close, and uh, then Central Rustic starts a run. Yawk knocks the ball out of bounds. Well, you can't throw those half lobs against Central Rustic. You can't put much air under the basketball at all because they're so quick to the basketball. Melcher now has to go backcourt to Guyverson. Good bring up against Yawk to the right side, down the middle, right to the glass. It's stripped away, but picked up by Hovey, and Hovey puts it up and in. Travis Hovey. Right place at the right time by Hubby, who tends to hang around the basket to get his share of those kind of points. Carlson outside. Melcher's there with him, not a Woodworth. Loops the pass. Razzle dazzle. Now it goes to Yawk. Yawk jump. Upwards, no good. Rebound taken off by Hatfield of the Valley team. Trailing by three. Island with it now. Diverson, the ball's almost knocked away by McLaughlin. Over to the right side goes Melcher, loops it inside to Hovey. Hovey turns back to Melcher, top Highland, left side, Giverson. Giverson baseline, back inside to Hatfield. Hatfield's going to put it up. No good. Rebound Woodworth. He comes off in the gallop. Now he's behind the back. Go to the top. He's going to stop and put up a three. It's no good. Rebound by Hovey, strong. Off to Melcher. Loop pass goes to Highland. Kyle in the middle, back to Hovey. Shot is up no good. And no call that time. Looked like Hovey ran over his player, but back to York, down to McLaughlin. McLaughlin has it now to Woodworth. A central rustic. Now back to McLaughlin. Give and go to Burrett. Gets his man in the air, puts it up and in. Good job. Great feed that time by McLaughlin. Got Hovey had forced over to help, and Burt cashes in. There's a good look at him. 47 42. Melcher. Right baseline to Giverson. Loops the pass into Hovey. Hovey turns in a lot of traffic. Tries to get it onto his left. Burt's there to knock it away. And Woodworth picks it up. Brock Burt, so alert on defense. Oh, nice pass inside with Woodworth. Now he gets it back from Burt. This time he doesn't get anything. And he's McLaughlin. Puts it up. Rejected by Hovey. Puts it up again. Rejected again by Hovey. And Hovey is fouling. Oh, Central LaRusse just keeps attacking on the inside. You saw Burt with the alert defensive play at the one end. The attack, immediate attack by Central oh, Rusick. Ball goes inside to McLaughlin, who draws the foul on Travis Hovey. His first. Taylor McLaughlin, foul shot is missed. Game, and a host of players will be coming in the game now. Lagerdahl and Martinez will come in for Central Rusick. Here's Andrew Yock will check out along with Towson. And for Valley High School, Cole Pullen, 21, checks in along with Nate Gilbert. The foul shot is up. No good. Picked off by Hovey. And the ball is deflected away and almost uh, picked up by McLaughlin. The quick hands people are out there. McLaughlin again. That goes back touch. Go back to Lay Layup. Yes. And it all happened because of McLaughlin. Great hustle.
Central able to put great pressure on the basketball. And at home, they get it right back. There's a play control foul on Cole Pullen. And that was either an outstanding Academy Award act that time by Woodworth. As the Valley crowd behind us is not happy with that at all. Well, that's certainly a tough call. I mean, a, a very difficult call to make. You've got two players. There's contact there, block charge. West Seroys came in and really sold the call, though, with the immediate signal of the offensive foul. Valley will take a timeout. Coach Littlefield, there he is. Recognizing, taking the opportunity to settle his team down as once again they have been plagued by turnovers here at the midway point here in the third quarter. So Central Roostic just continues to attack defensively. And on offense, they want to spread you out to try to take you off the dribble and create opportunities for their shooters. The Valley team has committed three team fouls in this second half, and as yet, Central Roostick has not committed a foul. Carlson left it there for, <laughs> for Andrew Yacht, and he got mixed up into the double dribble there by Carlson. As it goes the other way, the Gilbert will inbound the ball. Now it goes to Pullen. Pullen's going to turn. He goes down. Carlson goes down. They're going to call it travel. Another right. turnover. Well, Pullen got the ball right in an area where a trap uh, can occur. Good pressure that time by Carlson. Woodward is going to put it up from the lane. It's no good. Rebound by Hovey. Uh, the uh, Valley team, he comes down with it. Now he gets it back inside. The ball is still loose. Picked up in there by York. Now to Martinez in the backcourt. Woodward. Woodward's going to turn, bring it down. Still on the dribble. Now to Carlson. Carlson goes to York. York's going to put it up and draw the foul off Meltzer. Boy, they are working with both ends. This uh, Central is the team. York is so good with the basketball. Gets into his shot really quickly and uses the ball fake and the shot fake effectively too. Now he's drawn a number of fouls and that's that foul that time goes to Stephen Staples. That's his first. So that's the fourth team foul. Up and good by York. As McLaughlin will check back in. Martinez will check out. Some of the crowd there down from Mars Hill. Panthers, number 11, Caleb As Highland checks back in with Hatfield and Guyverson of the Valley team. Foul shot is up and good. He gets the roll. 51 to 42 the score. Melcher with it. Down the middle. Nice pass inside to Hovey. Misses the shot. Rebound taken off in there by Carlson. The pass goes to Woodworth. Woodworth stopped. Looks it back to Carlson. Carlson with an off balance shot inside McLaughlin in traffic. Puts it up and in. That, that whole Eastern Maine tournament, he just has a nose for the basketball. Anytime the ball goes inside, you usually find Mr. McLaughlin right around it. Uh, back the other way, Crocodile is fouling. That's the only, that's the only the first team foul. Uh, Crocodile picks up his third. And, and Bert will check back in for Sissel Now on the other end, that last time, if you're Valley, you're a little concerned because a wide open, or at least a power layup opportunity for Hovey, right where you want the basketball, is not able to convert. He's got another one. He misses this one. Follow, he puts it in. Stays with it very well. 53 to 44. A really fine looking basketball player in this young man. Mr. Hovey. There's Carlson, now to Burt. Left side to York. York starts down the middle, scoops inside to Burt. He's in traffic, looks for help. Back outside McLaughlin. Now goes to Woodworth. Off balance shot is up as no good. And the rebound off by Hovey. Also's long pass to Highland. Highland's going to put up a three from the corner. It's no good. Rebound taken off by Central Rustic. York now deep pass. Trying to put it up in the air with a lot of air under it. And Diverson picks it off. 2.30 left. Now goes to Melser. Melser's past the baseline. He's going to turn in a lot of traffic and travel. Well, the 
pressure continues. Valley looking for a way to try to get the ball into the paint. To get the central roots of pressure. 53 44 to score. Yard goes inside, puts it up and in. You can hear. And you see one time down the floor, York's on the perimeter. Next time down, he goes into the post and does well. Goes both so well. Jiverson comes back with it up high, no good. And the rebound, Ashton Hovey comes off. And Andrew York is fouled. Good position that time by Hovey. Follow number 15, Andrew York. That's the second team second. Collects the offensive rebound. That will go to the free throw line. Martinez will check back shot. in. Get a good chance to get a close up of. Uh, Mr. Hovey, Travis. Foul shot is up and no good. It almost seems like a daily is going to explode at any second, but it hasn't happened. Well, Hovey certainly failed to cash in on a few opportunities that he's had. And now we're going to get a timeout. 30-second timeout taken by Timmy Brewer of Central Aroostook. Going to set his deal for the next two minutes here of the quarter. Hubby will be back on the line to shoot his second free throw. I think Timmy Brewer might be have been concerned with a couple of those passes and getting a little sloppy themselves. Only one turnover they had in the first quarter. But the turnovers have picked up if you're uh, central of Russo can is cause for some concern on the part of Timmy Brewer. Timmy Brewer, by the way, played for Central Arusik, the, the state championship team of 1994. Heavy shot is up and doesn't get the roll. Rebound by York, who goes high. <laughs> York coming back with it, going right to the glass, puts it up, it's no good. Rebound taken off by Dyson, stolen by York. Puts it back up and draws a foul. Well, York is just uh, relentless. Great hesitation. Dribble move to come down to free him up, up to the jump shot. Misses, follows it, and gets the steal, and Cook draws the foul as well. Patterson trying to plead his case to Mr. Whitaker, the official. Follow but, uh, number 11. Does not. So Andrew goes back to the line. This is only a junior. Foul shot is up and good. We haven't seen his brother as yet. Him and, York. And, and what do you do if you're uh, Valley? Because in the first half, it was all Carlson with 22 points. Now it's York, and you can't forget about Woodworth either. All three very capable ball players. York here with his uh, second shot, righty 56 with 44 to score. Andrew's shot is up and good. And the pressure is on. Nelson with the ball. Still in the backcourt. Now it goes in the middle to Giverson, goes behind it back to Hubby, puts it up and in. Nice pass that time behind the back, and Hubby put it in. Nice job of getting the ball to the middle to Giverson, their playmaker who fed Hubby, who had the nice finish. Ball goes to Carlson from York now. Got it by Nelson. He goes down the lane, going to put it up off balance, and we'll see player control on Carlson. Well, as you pointed out, Joe, Carlson came into the lane a little out of control. Was not set, put his shoulder down, and when you see that as an official, 90% of the time, it's going to be an offensive foul. Carlson's first personal. Blockadile checks back in, but he's got three personals on him. Jiverson still in the backcourt. The Hatfield off to Pullen now. Still in the backcourt. Melser and they finally break the 10 second line. Hovey comes up to get the ball. Good recognition by Hovey to help out his teammates. Hatfield with it. Melser. Melser with a jump shot. It's up, it's no good. Rebound tip. Woodworth with it. Brings down. He can stop on a dime. Now goes back outside to Carlson with a downtown three. Actually deflected that time by Hatfield. And the ball's knocked out of bounds by Central Rooster. And the pressure continues by Central Rusick. Now we've got <laughs> Hubby looking around. Still in the backcourt. Hatfield. Now to Pullen. In the middle of Giverson. Giverson goes right to the glass. Tries to shoot it off the left side of Melser, but Blockadale's in and knock it down. I'm not sure that gentleman, but I think he's trying to 
expressed the point of view that if, if Tyler Guyverson had only looked at the rim, he might have scored a layup. Yock checks back in. Also, Brian Shaw, his birth checks out. 37.6 seconds left, 11 point difference here. Melcher, now to Pullen. Now it goes to Hatfield. Back to Pullen. Pullen starts to go to the lane. Nice bounce inside of Hatfield. He puts it up and he's fouled. Anyone could have got him. <laughs> he went down hard. Fouls on 21. Number 21, Tim Carlson. That's his so second. Team second foul four. by Tim Carlson. And going to the line will be Eric Hatfield. Foul <laughs> shot is up and it's no good. And they're also watching tonight at Eagle Hatfield. There's Mr. Hatfield going up. You see he gets inside position that time on Brian Shaw. Carlson comes over to miss the personal foul. One word to check back in. As Bally also has another player with 28.9 seconds to check in. Foul shot is no good in the rebound action. There's going to be another foul. So things quieting down a little bit. Foul on number 22, Travis Hubby. That's the second. He didn't that foul on Hubby. Reporting into the game for Valley. It's only his Sean second Hyatt foul, but Gilbert. of concern for the Valley High Cavaliers is that his team foul, number six. The next one will put Central Lusick into the bonus for the remainder of the ball game. Step it with Staples and Gilbert checked in for Valley. Woodworth, good ball handler. Diverson against him. Now left corner to Martinez. Martinez goes right in the lane, puts it up, and they're going to call a player control. Control again. We've seen a ton of them tonight. Good job stepping in that time defensively by Cole Pullen. As Martinez put his head down and head to the bucket, Timmy Brewer a little disappointed that he wasn't able to get last shot going into the fourth quarter. Kyverson with the ball now. With Martinez on him. Off to Melcher. Melcher at the top, going to go the lane. Now goes on a pull in. Three, no good. Tip. Woodworth looks up at the clock. He's going to send it up in the buzzer. It's no good. At the end of three complete, 57-46. Central will be back right after this. Educational outreach, the internet. This is the main public broadcasting network. You're watching tournament basketball on the television stations of the main public broadcasting network. Eight minutes of basketball left. Central Rustic leading over Valley High School by a 57 to 46 score. Ken. Well, at advantage Central Rustic, they came out strong reestablished their pressure defense in that third quarter and outscored Valley by a 16 to 9 count and that's what they're playing for right there because they're playing for a little bit more than that too but they want that goal ball but it's also for these players community means so much to them and it's about community pride if you live in Mars Hill or if you live in Valley, Bingham Valley. you're supporting these boys all the way Highland comes up with a travel another turnover by this team the Valley High School Cavaliers. Carlson with the ball now and the lead. Woodworth with it down the middle of the lane. The ball's knocked away. And they say it's going to be deflected that time. Ball. That's the penetration game of uh, Central Rustic they're so, so good at. McLaughlin now to Woodworth with a shot. And brings it. No hesitation by Jason Woodworth. A little bit of daylight, and he just lets it fly. 14-point lead, 60-46. to 46. And maybe it's his turn to pick up some of the storm. And a player control foul call in Guyverson. So everything going wrong for this Valley team. But uh, Dwight Littlefield up, applauding his team. Doesn't change expressions as Hubbard comes back in. And checking out is Sean Lair. Always stays very positive, and it's reflected in the way his teams behave and in their demeanor under pressure. 
Carlson with the ball in the dribble, guided by Melcher. Now bounces, goes to Woodworth on the left side. He puts up another three. No good, rebound by Harvey. Melcher coming back with it for Valley. Now he stops, loops it to Harvey. Harvey goes in the middle. Shot rejected in there by Gilbert. And Highland is there having another play of control. So Valley is out of control with a play of control. Trying to get desperately, get something started, but they can't seem to. And there goes Highland. Uh, his forte is not beating people off the dribble, but he attempted to get into the lane. Collision between he and York. York drew the offensive foul. It's only Mark Howell, uh, Highland's first personal of the evening. But Valley now takes a, a full 30-second timeout. And they have seven minutes, Joe, to erase a 14-point deficit. There you see York establishing defensive position. Highland a little bit out of control. And right there with the call, the offensive foul on Mark Highland. So Valley, to them, taking care of the basketball. They, they can't squander any opportunities offensively. They need to get back to, they had an outstanding second quarter, Joe, when they scored 25 points. They had a good deal of momentum going into that, into halftime. But in the second half, Central Aroostook's pressure has forced turnovers by Valley, and their defensive quickness has resulted in a 14-point lead for the Central Aroostook Panthers. Carlson with the ball now. Gives to Woodworth inside to York. York's going to turn in the crowd. Back to Woodworth. Now he scoops a pass inside McLaughlin. Off to Burt. Burt outside to Carlson. Carlson got it by Melcher. Takes the screen, works the ball to the left side. Woodworth, Burt, I should say. Back, York is being fouled by Gilbert, and he'll be on the line for one and one. And the next one will be a two-shot Turnovers, fouls. Andrew York. Valley now, that, that time, Central Rustic had a very patient possession, worked the basketball. Now, get a chance to score a couple more and pad their lead. There's the first one, 61 to 46. And as Andrew York will get ready. And the Mars Hill mighty people. Ball shot is up and good. York picking right up from the Eastern Maine tournament. Doing his thing. And as Ken mentioned, great leaping ability. And there's Highland with a downtown three. This is no good. Burnt off of the rebound. And the unsung heroes. And Carlson anticipated a pass and then brought the ball down again. And the sophomore makes a mistake. A lot of credit goes to uh, Brock Burt. He gets overlooked, but he's one of those glue guys, as they're known. Doesn't care if he scores. He just likes to play defense, rebound, feed the basketball. Nice uh, in uh, pass goes to Harvey. Doesn't connect. Melcher comes back with a little shot. No good. Harvey with a rebound. And that's the reason why he got the rebound. <laughs> Harvey getting a little frustrated at that time. I wouldn't yes. run him he to me. Well, <laughs> the, the rebound came, in Hubby's opinion anyway, off deep enough so that he picked him up. And that's that's about the most negative you would see <laughs> expression out of Dwight Littlefield right there. That little, tiny, imperceptible almost shake of the head. The bird will go to the line on the other side with a two, and he puts the first one up and in. He played awful well in the... Uh, Eastern Maine tournament. Well, he shot the ball one time today. Foul shot is up, and this one's no good. And let's see. I guess if someone was in the lane for Central Rustic, so would have been uh, nullified anyway. Hatfield will get the ball in play. It goes to Melcher. 63 to 46 to score. Melcher coming back, puts it up in the lane, and gets the roll. Well, some people wonder no, no, why would Central Rustic press when they're up? by a substantial margin and the simple answer is because that's what they do <laughs> as they play they do what they do and Hatfield grabs uh, Andrew York's arm and he'll go the line for two 
Timmy Brewers has done an outstanding job with this ball club. They feature relentless pressure on both ends of the floor because they're continually attacking the basket. And now York is a one-man wrecking crew in terms of piling up fouls against the Valley High Cavaliers. Now shot is up and this is no good. Only a junior. Be back next year. Clockadile checks back in. He's only a sophomore. Mr. York is getting ready to attempt free throw number 15. And 15's on his shirt. Up and good. 64 to 48, 556 remaining. Pullins pass to Hubby. Hubby goes right to the glass and rejected by Rock. Rock came out of nowhere and pounded that ball away from an easy layup by Hubby. Hubby still can't believe it. Comes inside now to Highland. Highland starts to go. Rock is here to steal the ball. On the dribble, Hatfield with him. Now to Woodworth. Woodworth got it by Pullen. Woodworth down the middle, and there's going to be a foul away from the ball. And this, I think, is going to be on Mr. Highland. 31 it is. And going back to the line will be York. Well, so away Highland, from the ball. Away from the ball. Trying to deny York the basketball. York uh, too quick for Mark Highland that time. And what a play, what a spectacular defensive play by York. Mm. At the other end, Hovey did not see him. Obviously, he can't. He's, uh, from behind, York anticipated, timed everything just beautifully. York will get ready for his second shot. He missed his first. 12 for 16 from the free throw line. 64 to 48 to score, 535 left. There's Andrew shot is up and good. All net. 65 to 48. Melcher back with it. Tries to go the lane, stops in the lane, puts it up and in. Nice pull up that time by Lucas Melcher. Full court pressure. Carlson with the ball in the dribble. Now there's still time, but Valley's got to get stops or force turnovers. And it looked like uh, Carlson went down and slid down. I don't know if he got hit in the mouth or what, but. Uh, they stopped play because of that. I don't think he wants to come out unless McLaughlin comes in for him. No, he doesn't because he's been talking about it. And Mark McLaughlin will put the ball in play right in front of the goal ball. Now Valley has uh, time here because Central Rusic doesn't really have a delay game. Their, their delay game is to put more arc on their jump shots. That's how they take time off the clock. Andrew York with it, got it by Hatfield. Now there's Carlson all along, and misses the shot. Rebound comes off to Hatfield. So Valley will have plenty of possessions, enough to get right back into this game if they are able to maximize what they're doing on offense. 65-15 the score. Pullen, Pullen turns. Melcher, now to Giverson. Giverson going to go in the middle. Goes to Hubby. Hubby's going to put it up and draw the foul. Foul's going to be on Burrett. Good work that time between Guyverson and Hatfield, who will go to the line. Hatfield, not Hubby. That foul goes to Bird, who was, was so concerned uh, with Hubby, he was late getting over and providing help on Mr. Hatfield. Hatfield's foul shot is good. Now, always a good sign if you're behind to be able to score points while the clock is stopped. Down by 14. Strange things have happened. Second shot is good. Well, Valley is certainly capable of making a run in this ball game. Jock with it in the backcourt. Andrew on the dribble against Hatfield. 65 52 to score. Jock going to come down with it. Behind the back. Now he tries to go to the lane. Tries to get it to Brick. He controls it and throws it away. Going all the way down. Carlson through the legs. Looked like a tennis shot. But. Uh, would have been a backcourt anyway. Well, mistake by Central Rusick gives Valley some life. If he can knock it down, he does. He does. Pullen with an outside three. So here they come. They're down by 10. With 4.09 left. Woodworth with the ball. And Tim Brewer sees it up and wants a timeout. And with 4.05 remaining here in this fourth period of play, it's 65 to 55. As Hatfield 
Hit her a couple of foul shots. And Cole Pullen nails down a three to cut it to 10. Well, suddenly we have Central LaRusso getting a little careless, a little casual with their possessions. And Valley, of course, uh, is they're not going to go away in this game. So we'll see how this unfolds. I'm sure Timmy Brewer needs to spread his offense out. Keep attacking the basket because that's what they do. It's certainly too much time to start getting into any thoughts of any kind of a delay game. But they do have the quickness advantage. They've got good ball handlers. They'll probably spread out and keep attacking. They might feature uh, York down on the free throw line and try to post the ball to him and at least get him on the free throw line. So we'll see how this uh, unfolds. Valley, will they press? Probably not at this point. But certainly some life in this Valley crowd. With four minutes left. And Central Rooster will inbound the ball. Now it goes to York. York turns. There's Burnt. Layup. Yes. They, they get two of them back quickly. 67 to 55. Good finish. A lunge on a perimeter by Valley. Freed uh, York up for the penetration. Melcher back outside to Hatfield. Left side to Pullen. Now to Melcher. Melcher starts to go. Spins. Puts it off the glass. It's up. It's no good. Rebound taken off by McLaughlin. Off to Woodworth. Woodworth will bring down. Gardenson picks him up. Left side goes to Carlson. Looking inside. York at the top. Shattered by Hatfield. Now still in the dribble to Woodworth. Woodworth has a ball knocked away by Pullen, but retains it. Now he goes, I should say, Carlson to Woodworth. Now to Burt. Burt puts it up and misses it. Rebound to McLaughlin. He's rejected by Holden. He pulls it off. And then going down the other way. Nelson with the ball. Down the middle goes to Hubby. Hubby to Pullen with another three. Yes! <laughs> 58 to 67. And a steal inside to Hatfield. Puts it up and in. 67 to 60. As Bailey is on a roll right now. Carlson, Diverson steals the ball on the dive. Picked up by Hatfield. Triple team loses the ball. Picked up by McLaughlin. The foul by Pollard. Boy, they make a run at that with 239 left. Well, we have wild end to end action here. As a steal by, there it is. There you see McLaughlin going in, picking up the foul at, after Pullen lost the basketball, stole it, lost it back, and now McLaughlin has a chance to up the lead to nine. See if he's got anything left. He's got really nailed. Checking back in for this Valley team will be Nate Gilbert. Well, you know, there's not going to be any quit on the part of Valley High School. They've got too much pride. Island also back in the game. A good care by McLaughlin of Cent Central Roostick. Central Roostick's going to have to win this ball game because Valley's not going to cooperate by any means. 69 to 60 to score. 231 left. Highland pass and Pullen. He drills it right by him. Well, Highland was trying to spot up for the three, which he does so well. Pullen on the penetrating pitch. We had Highland moving out, and the pass is uh, too far. Woodruff will be guarded by Highland as he brings the ball up. We're looking at a little clock at the same time. Now the ball goes to McLaughlin, back outside to Carlson. Carlson guarded by Pullen. He starts down the middle, and he's going to be fouled in there by Pullen. So it'll be a two-shot foul as we're in the double bonus. Well, Central Rusick starting to spread the floor now and feature their ball handlers in penetration. And they have three of them that are so adept at it. And number 21, Timmy Carlson. Number 15, Andrew York. And number 31, Jason Woodward. Carlson shot is good. Carlson had that good first half of 22 points. Only a sophomore, so he and Andrew York are back. For the Central Rooster team another year, that will make Tim Brewer smile. Foul shot is up and good. Very good foul shooters. Still 71 to 60, 11 point lead with 2 or 4 left. Melser, Hatfield, 
Now to Diverson. Diverson scoops it under him but doesn't get anything. He's at the bottom of the basket. Ball's knocked away. Picked up by Hatfield. Hop to Hubby. Hubby's going to go. And that could be a foul to call a miss. And he is not happy with that foul at all. I believe it was Andrew York uh, went in immediately, established his defensive position. Hubby not the guy you want trying to make plays in that particular situation. York with good position. Under two minutes now, 71 to 60. Woodworth with the ball. Guy was in there with him. Carlson got it by Island. Carlson right in the middle of the lane stops. And there's a grab in there by Guyverson. Guyverson's not happy with the call. He beat his case to the crowd. Well, as we said, Central Rusick's not really going to back oh, off. They'll spread it. Oh, if they see an opening, they will still continue to penetrate into the lane. 134 remaining in this contest. Ball point line, edge by the Central Rustic team. Carlson's foul shot is good. So they're making their money in the foul line right now. Well, Carlson with 22 points in the first half. They scored but three. Uh, here in the second half is Andrew York is taking up the ball for the offense. That's four straight foul shots by Carlson. 73 to 60 to score. Melcher with a down down three. It's no good. He gets it back. Now up to Highland is a three-point shooter. That's no good. Rebound by Burrett. Off to Woodard. Woodworth. Back to Woodworth. Coming down with it. Still in the dribble. Trying to steal the ball. Kicked it back outside to Carlson. 107 left. Carlson with it. Turns. Goes the baseline. Kicks it back outside to Woodworth. Woodward turns. Four fouls on Davison. He's going to try to pick up another one, I guess. Comes back outside to Carlson from York. Now goes to Bowman. And Andrew went down hard. And they're going to, looks like an ankle or? It's either a cramp. The way he's stretching his foot out looks like a, a cramp, which is going to be extremely painful. But York had to make a hustle play because it was a loose ball. And being Peter Rathie, he's able to get to that basketball first, tip it, keep it alive to Central Aroostik, and they will retain possession up by 13 with just a tick over 48 seconds to win. Barbara checks in, and Diverson asks for a timeout. So we'll set it for you. Then you see at the clock, 48.1, 73 to 70. Talked about checking for uh, Andrew Phillips. It was the Tim Carlson show the first half and the Andrew York show the second half. Put together two good halves. And a great comeback by Valley. Certainly with 48.1, it doesn't appear that they can knock off a 13-point deficit, but we'll wait and see. Well, when things got tight, Central Rusick turned to their defense. Once again, was able to pressure the basketball. And offensive fouls became a big factor here in the game as Central Rusick was able to draw several charges against the Valley players. And they will inbound the ball in front of their, uh, in front of the scorer's table. So you're gonna find a huge uh, advantage on the part of Central Rusick at the free throw line. And Guyverson has just fouled out of the game and going the line will be uh, Jason Woodworth. Ball number 11, Tyler Guyverson, that's his fifth. Checking in uh, for the foul dog Davison will be number 15. That'll be Brandon Davison. I don't know if they're brothers, at least brothers or cousins. They look alike. Same class. Senior and senior. Foul shot by Woodworth is good. Maybe twins. Okay. I'm sure. Perhaps they share the same snowmobile up there. <laughs> Ball shot is up and good. And coming in the game will be Brian Shaw and Burt will check out. 75 to 60, 15 point lead now. Number 35, Brian Shaw reporting in the game. Woodworth says, spread it out, let him have it. Melcher back with it. Gonna float one up good. He's been good at that down the middle. Lucas Melcher. 75 to 62. Carlson with it bringing it up now. Carlson's being fouled by Highland. 
as Dwight Littlefield will put some players in. Martinez will check back in for Central Rustic. Call number 31, Mark Highland, that's his third. And Carlson will go to the line. Jim Carlson at the line for two shots. Jim Carlson is four in a row. And only uh, a sophomore is Carlson. So he looks to have a bright future. Bell checking in is Curtis Miller for Valley. Jason is Woodworth is, is a good look at their floor general. Jason Woodworth celebrating with the, with the crowd as they will be taking a gold basketball back to Mars Hill tonight. Sean Lane, uh, Lay, I should say, number 20 is in the game. Carlson is being fouled in there by Hatfield. It's going to be a fun day at school tomorrow. Oh, no school tomorrow. Oh, they'll be on the fields picking potatoes tomorrow in the snow. Tim Carlson. Great job again by uh, Tim Brewer bringing together uh, this, uh, these kids who we had mentioned several times in the Eastern Maine tournament who appear to like each other, want to help each other. Carlson going back the line where he's been just about all this fourth period. Well, when you get to this point, obviously in the state championship game, you have two teams that understand their roles, uh, that get along. If you want to look at the teams that don't understand their roles and don't get along, look at the bottom of the standings because they don't make it this far. And and certainly a lot of credit has to go to both coaches and fostering that attitude. Taylor, no, excuse me, not Andrew York, but... Uh, where is his brother? Cameron, number five, checks in the game now. Blockadile's in there. Also, 51 has checked in for Central Rustic. That will be Travis White. Coming in is Paul Donahue. Martinez goes out. And uh, 35, Brian Shaw was in anyway. Well, you want to get all your guys in there so that they can say that they played in the state championship game. Cameron York with it. Off the Blockadile. Blockadile is out front, way out front. Now to Cameron Yacht. Now to Shaw. Inside to White. Shot is missed. And a foul in the action. So Travis White put one up and missed. And going the line will be Paul Donahue. Paul Curtis Miller, that's his first. See if we got everybody for uh, Valley. Greg Rich, number 30 in the game. We mentioned Austin Fluid. John Lay is in there, along with 15. Curtis which is Miller, number 12. Brandon Guyverson. And number 12, Curtis Miller. You like, you like the jacket tonight? A couple of freshmen for uh, Valley. Huh? Oh, looking good, Jack. I was going to buy me new one. And coming in also for the Central Rustic team is Matt McCartney. 8.2 seconds left. With the ball is Austin Floyd. And with a shot is Lay is no good. Shaw offered it. And that's it right there. And the final score is 79 to 62. And we'll be back right after this. Major funding for production of the high school basketball tournament on MPBN is provided by Maine's local True Value store owners, living and working in communities across the state, and proud to support the achievements of today's young athletes. Additional support is provided by Memic, a workers' compensation insurer, committed to helping Maine people enjoy safer and more secure lives at home and at work, online at Memic.com. And by Machias Savings Bank, a community bank committed to the economic development of eastern and northern Maine since 1869. MachiasSavings.com. Another champion crown. This one in the Class D Boys State Championship game. You should be proud of the young men on both of these teams for never giving up and playing their hearts out. We hope you're proud of the kind of job that we're bringing you these games we hope you'll support it by calling in your pledge of support to MPBN we have a forty dollar sixty dollar and a hundred twenty dollar pledge category that will bring you thank you gifts if you'd like to have a DVD high quality digital better recording of this game call in that forty dollar pledge one of our brand new high school basketball tournament 2005 MPBN mugs that's yours for a sixty dollar pledge 
and for that $120 pledge, we'll be happy to send you one of our brand new MPBN logo jerseys. And uh, that's something you can wear on the court or out on the beach, anywhere you'd like. And the championship team is uh, cutting the nets down and uh, having their fans cheer them on. You become a member of MPBN, we'll cheer you on as well. And if you're a member in the category $35 on up, you become a subscriber to Viewfinder for a year once each month. It'll be sent to your home, and you'll keep track of all of the great programs here on MPBN. Not only the high school basketball tournament coverage games, but also all of the other great programming we have for you here on MPBN. So please do make that call and that pledge right now. Well, it's just about time for the awards, so let's go to the, uh, to the bench right now. They should be very proud of you and you of them for their continuous support. But Coach Dwight Littlefield and assistant coaches Luke Robinson and Michael Heron from Valley High School, please come forward to present the runners-up individual awards. <laughs> Managers James Sorrell. Lucas Hines. Player, players, freshman, number 10, Austin Plourd. Number 12, Curtis Miller. Sophomore, number 24, Stephen Staples. Juniors, number 20, Sean Lay. Number 21, Cole Poulin. Number 30, Craig Rich. Number 32, Eric Hatfield. And number 22, Travis Hubby. Seniors, number 15, Brandon Guyberson. Number 25, Nate Gilbert. Number 11, Tyler Guyberson. Number 14, Lucas Melcher. And number 32, Eric Hatfield. Main Principals Association Basketball Committee members, Mr. Bob Stett, Principal at Van Buren District Secondary School, and Mr. Phil Faulkner, Athletic Administrator at Katahdin High School, will now present this plaque to the Valley High School Cavaliers, the Main Principals Association 2005 Invitational Basketball Tournament State Runner-Up. By the way, this is the eighth consecutive year that Valley High has been in the state tournament. Congratulations on an outstanding season and on an outstanding eight years. Would Coach Tim Brewer and Assistant Coach Rod Caudry from Central Rustic High School please step forward to present the individual championship award. Managers, Ashley Brewer. Abby Young. Players, freshmen. Number five, Cameron York. Sophomores, number 21, Tim Carlson.
Number 23, Sam Clockadile. Juniors, number 11, Kayla McLaughlin. Number 15, Andrew York. Number 25, Eric Martinez. Number 45, Matt McCartney. Seniors, number 35, Brian Shaw. Number 41, Paul Donahue. Number 51, Travis White. Number 31, Jason Woodworth. And number 33, Brock Burt. Maine Principal Association Basketball Committee members, Mr. Bob Stett and Mr. Phil Faulkner will now present the gold ball to the Central Aristic Panthers, the Maine Principal Association 2005 Invitational Basketball Tournament State Champion. Congratulations on a great season, gentlemen. That's it. The ultimate prize in any of the classes of high school basketball. The gold ball. That's the state trophy. We hope you enjoyed tonight's game. We hope you stay tuned because we have an important message or two for you. And one of them is that if you enjoyed tonight's game and you have your own souvenir of tonight's games.